Hello everybody, this is Tim here again. Uh, just figured I'd go ahead and do a quick video. Uh, one last thing for the day. Figured I'd go ahead and do a review for Terminator Genesis of all movies. I finally saw it. <clears throat> and really I have to say, I don't really see what the big deal is. I don't know why this movie is getting so much hate from the hardcore fans. I mean, casual moviegoers seem to like it. And the movie has a decent rating on IMDb. And I don't really see why this film is getting such a, a raping of the ass by the hardcore fans of this franchise. It's not that damn bad, people. I, I guess I can kind of see why at the same time. It's because it redoes scenes from Terminator 1 and 2, which I thought were kind of neat that it redoes scenes like that. And it pays, it's more like a homage. It's not really spitting in the face of the original movies when you watch it. <clears throat> but essentially, I can kind of see why it might piss off some hardcore fans. That and the fact that this is a new timeline, the other films are erased. But at the same time, there's nothing you could do with the original franchise. After Terminator Salvation, that story was done in the ground. I mean, you could have made a sequel to that, but Terminator Salvation was so weak that, <coughs> why bother? Fuck it. Um, and people wanted to see Arnold again, so. I mean, well, you still could have brought Arnold in a sequel to Salvation, but at the same time, Salvation was the worst performing Terminator movie. <laughs> it seems to be the most hated by fans. So they said, no, pass on sequel salvation. But anyway, as far as Terminator Genesis goes, I can also see why the hardcore fans would probably hate it. It's because this is a popcorn movie. This is more similar in style to Part 3, but it takes itself more seriously than Part 3. It doesn't have any of the goofy, go really goofy humor like Part 3 does, except for one scene where Arnold and his and, uh, Sarah Connor and Kyle Reese are getting their mug shots taken, and you hear the song Bad Boys playing. That's really stupid shit. I hated that. That shouldn't have been in the movie. Uh, but yeah, this is a popcorn Terminator film. Some of the scenes in the movie really feel like, you know, straight out of a Marvel movie, really. But at the same time, I know people are going to say, well, Terminator shouldn't be a popcorn movie. But at the same time, I'm saying, well, why can't Terminator be fun? Why can't they make a, just a fun Terminator popcorn movie? Why can't they do that? Yes, I would prefer the more serious drama of part one and two. All these films have, have really lacked the drama since the second one. They just can't pull off the drama. They get really good action, but hardly any drama. Uh, the bad guy in this movie is John Connor. I've heard some complaints about that. Uh, John Connor, though, being the bad guy, this is probably the most interesting thing his character has done in the series, honestly. His character has never really been that, that interesting to me. I've always been Sarah Connor all the way. John Connor has never really been that interesting of a character, honestly, in this franchise. I've never really been able to make his character that interesting. But, uh, but yeah, him as a bad guy in this film, he, he's not like he just wakes up and says, well, I want to be evil. I mean, he gets turned by Skynet into a bad guy. And the timeline, the time travel stuff is kind of confusing, but it's a movie, so you can let some of it go. Basically, what happens is is they've left some stuff out of the movie, but I've looked up some stuff about the movie that they're going to reveal based on further in new installments down the road, or they want to anyway, depending on how good or bad this film has done in theaters, which I have no idea how it did in theaters. But um, basically, you got uh, John Connors getting ready to destroy Skynet and send Kyle Reese back in time. <clears throat> and... Uh, an alternate version of Skynet from an alternate timeline who's more advanced than the one in the regular timeline comes to the regular timeline, fucks everything up, transforms John Connor into a bad guy, um, and that causes the timeline to be changed and causes Terminator 1 and 2 to be erased or at least completely changed or altered or whatever. So Kyle Reese played by Jock Courtney, wrong casting. I don't hate Jock Courtney like some people do. He just keeps getting cast into roles that are not right for him for some reason. Just keeps getting cast into roles that are not right. And in, Well, I will be honest, though, in the preview for Suicide Squad, the couple seconds I saw him in as Captain Boomerang, he looked he looked decent. He looked alright in that. But here he's completely miscasted. He has none of the drama that Michael Bean has, but he's not trying to be like Michael Bean at all. I can let it go slightly because it's a popcorn movie. He's not trying to bring the human element like Michael Bean had, and he's also in way too good a shape for this movie. For somebody that's supposed to be like starving or whatever in the future and getting burned with lasers and shit and running from everything. One thing I liked is the future scenes in the movie at the beginning are shot at night. This movie's pretty much split into three parts. Um, the future scenes are at night. I like that. And there's laser guns. So already better than Salvation. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like that. Um, uh, so Kyle Reese goes back in time. Um, he goes back in time. The past has been changed because now the timeline's been changed even further in the future or whatever, there is an Arnold Terminator that also got sent back in time. 
and the Arnold Terminator, you know, of course, is played by Arnold again. It's cool to see Arnold back. This is Arnold's best performance since Terminator 2. It's much better than his performance in Terminator 3, where it seemed like he was slacking a little. Here, it seems like he's really enjoying himself, and he's glad to be back, and they play up, like, the whole Terminator thing really good. He does a good job with it. Um, and about how, like, the skin on the outer of the Terminator, like, ages, but this endoskeleton inside stays the same. He's, like, old, but not obsolete. Lines like that are really clever. That's, that's cool. Arnold really the best performance in the movie honestly then you got Amelia Clark once again bad casting she she's not right for Sarah Connor but because of the dynamic between her and Arnold that they play where it's like a father-daughter thing though her look her youthful look to her where she looks so young kind of plays in her favor because I could never picture like Lyndall Hamilton playing like a father-daughter thing like this with the Terminator <clears throat> but because of her look though and it being a popcorn movie and the father-daughter thing angle that they're going for it pays off good it's pretty much a repeat of the the uh, angle from Terminator 2 with John Connor except for the daughter instead they pretty much just redo that but I, I liked it I didn't mind it it was, it was fun <clears throat> but uh, Amelia Clark does look a bit too young still though but she's amazingly hot though and her tits are like amazing but anyway <clears throat> but uh, yeah she's miscast as well she's a little bit better than Jai Courtney though and, uh, but I will admit I warmed up to Jai Courtney the more I watched the movie because it's a popcorn movie. So I was having fun. So I was like, oh, Jai, I'll let it go. <laughs> so I warmed up to him a little bit more through the movie. <clears throat> Her and Jai Courtney, though, don't really have very good chemistry together. Jai Courtney's fine whenever it's like action stuff. But whenever he has to like emote more emotion, he, it doesn't work. It just doesn't play through. But uh, you get some cool stuff though. They pretty much sandwich the first two movies together. You get the evil Arnold, which shows up. And they recreate scenes like the scene where Arnold gets his clothes from the punks in the beginning of the first movie. They recreate it like really awesome. I've heard some people say, why didn't they get Bill Paxton back? And I'm like, you don't really need Bill Paxton back. He was only in the movie for like five seconds. I mean, that would be cool to see him back there, but you don't need that. I mean, why is that such a big deal? But anyway, <clears throat> but yeah, and the CGI Arnold looks great. This is some great CGI here <clears throat> on this young looking Arnold. I loved it. And the fight between them is it's alright. Not anything to write home about, but it but it but it's it's decent. Pretty much because they knew Arnold was gonna arrive. They've planned for him for years, the good Arnold that Sarah Connor has. <clears throat> and uh, they take the evil Arnold out with some high tech weapon or whatever and blast him through his chest. Pretty much find out Sarah Connor's parents were killed in the seventies, I believe, and Good Arnold saved her, and he's been taking care of her ever since. So that's why she thinks of him as like her dad or whatever. And that's why she has emotional attachment to him, honestly. <clears throat> but yeah, so they pretty much take out the young Arnold. Then the T-1000 shows up. T-1000 is played by the guy from uh, the, uh, what the hell was the name of the movies? G.I. Joe played Storm Shadow. He's good. He does a great job imitating Robert Patrick. I don't know why they just didn't get Robert Patrick, though. But uh, this guy does a great job imitating Robert Patrick. Uh, I thought it was cool to see the T-1000 in like an 80s type setting like that. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, the movie's PG-13 though, but it, it works in the movie's favor most of the time because most of the movie is just non-stop straight action between the two Terminators. But whenever it's like the Terminator, the evil Terminator is killing a human though, you can tell the PG-13 rating though, it kind of slacks on it a little bit. Um, kind of hurts the movie. Just a little. Nothing to like go, ooh, you son of a bitch, you know, ogre, but... Still, it's kind of uh, getting a little pussy Terminator vibe on there. But anyway, <laughs> um, so they lure the T-1000 back to their hideout. Um, Sarah Connor has his trap rig where all this like, acid comes pouring down and starts drowning the T-1000 in it. Because once again, they planned for him, so they know how to take him out. So the acid comes down, melting the Terminator or T-1000. Arnold just comes in and grabs it with a fucking choke hold, holds it out to the acid, and burns it while the skin melts off Arnold's arm. This is cool. Uh, the CGI is much more improved from the trailer, which looked really bad in the trailer. But here it's much more improved. It's still not great, but it is pretty good most of the time. It's pretty good. But you're ha if you're having fun with the movie, though, you can kind of let it go. Um, so pretty much they build a time machine, which I thought was neat. They travel through time. Um, one joke I thought was funny is when uh, Arnold looks at like uh, Kyle Reese neck and looks at Jack Courtney and say, he looks down at like Jack Courtney's penis or whatever and says, uh, Kyle Reese, I have seen little to indicate that you would be an effective protector for Sarah Connor. I love that little Arnold jokes like that. That, that works for the movie. The humor is much better handled here than it was in part three. But yeah, they build a time machine, which I thought was kind of cool. They go to the future. Um, and I know people are going to say, why not go a couple months in advance, you know, before Skynet was made in the future or whatever. Uh, that way you can stop it before it gets started. But I'm like, it's, once again, it is a plot hole. 
but it's one of those things I can kind of let go because it's for a dramatic kitchen. I don't want to see them hanging out drinking Slurpees for two, three days before they go, you know, destroy Skynet. We got to get this movie going along. It's an action movie after all. But uh, yeah, so they go to destroy Skynet. You got Miles Dyson shows up. Uh, that's kind of neat seeing him there. He's played by Courtney B. Vance, I believe, who was on a, long, a lot of episodes of Law and Order, uh, Law and Order Criminal Intent, maybe. I don't remember, but he's fine <clears throat> um, as Miles Dyson. So pretty much they all team up. Uh, the John Connor Terminator is really cool. He's pretty much like an, an atomized type Terminator. Uh, he can like atomize himself into little particles or nanobots. Nanobots, that's it. He can turn, just change himself into little nanobot particles like fly across the room and reappear on the other side. That's kind of cool. He's, this Terminator is really feels like the most real improvement over the T-1000 since Terminator 2. Like the TX was kind of eh. This one really feels like a step above T-1000 really. I mean, he can fly across rooms and everything. He's much stronger than a Z-1000. He can take much more damage. The only thing that can hurt this guy is magnets. So I think it's cool that Schwarzenegger takes some magnet, magnets and like puts them on his hands. He used them as like brass knuckles. I like that. That was cool. That way he can actually build a fighting one-on-one. -on -one. That was cool. Um, you get a school bus flip in the movie, though, where they're like in a school bus and they're being chased by the John Carter Terminator. And the school bus like goes, we're, we're like up in the air like two, three, four, five times and hits the ground and it rolls like four or five times. And I'm like, oh, okay, I had to... That really, that was really stupid. There's no way they would have survived that. I hated that part in the movie. I hated that, and I hated the next scene where they're getting their bug shots and it's playing the bad boys theme. I hated that shit. But luckily, J.K. Simmons shows up in the movie and, and <laughs> makes the movie more fun. Um, J.K. Simmons is cool to see him there. He believes Sarah Connor about the end of the world, Terminator's shit. He starts helping him out. Um, uh, they take a helicopter, John Connor chases after him in a helicopter. This is when the movie starts feeling a little bit too much like a video game though, when they're like chasing each other uh, in the helicopters. It starts to feel a little bit too much like a video game, it even looks like a video game. That kind of annoyed me also. But then they make it to the building at the end, the uh, <clears throat> Genesis. Uh, pretty much Skynet is going to be an app that's going to go online like all over the world, which is actually realistic in real life because everybody uses shit with apps and everything. But uh, yeah. And uh, Skynet's going to go online, be self-aware, destroy everything, you know, fuck the world up like it always does. Another thing I didn't like is it's all about, you know, we can stop Judgment Day. I'm so sick of this plot. Give me something new. Give me something new. You know, why not no, maybe even take the story away from the, the Connor family. Do a movie like, or maybe a Connor, you know, descendant or something. Do a movie even further in the future. Maybe after machines or something have made peace with the humans or something, anything. Like, you know, a hundred years in the future where machines and humans have become one or something. I don't know, shit. Anything. You know, give me something else here. I'm kind of connored out. I don't know how you can do a whole other movie with the Connors, but I guess you can pull it off with a part six, which they will inevitably be a part six, regardless of how this movie's done. It'll either be a part six or it'll be a, a straight remake of the first movie. But anyway, so they get to the building. <clears throat> Um, John Connor shows up there and he's getting ready to get ready to kill Sarah Connor, Cal Reese, and he's blabbing about something. And then Schwarzenegger like impels him with something against the wall, and Schwarzenegger walks in and says, "John Connor talks too much." I love that line. I thought that was hilarious. Um, they get in there. John Connor is holding Sarah Connor hostage. Uh, one thing, yeah, it's like how can John Connor kill Sarah Connor and Cal Reese if uh, you know if they're his parents? How can he exist? But basically what he says is that because of the timeline being altered or whatever and him being from a timeline that doesn't exist anymore, he can't disappear because his timeline doesn't even exist anymore. He's not this Sarah Connors, John Connor. He's from an, an alternate timeline and has traveled to this new timeline basically. It's basically what they're what he's saying. They don't elaborate on it enough for it to make sense. But basically it's from an alternate timeline. His timeline was destroyed and altered. So he's left that alternate timeline and came to this timeline. You know, from A to B. So he can't, even if they're dead, he can't just, just cease to exist. It's a little confusing, but if you watch enough time travel movies, you can kind of rationalize it. But it, I will admit, it is hard, and I can see why average moviegoers would be like, what? Huh? <laughs> but anyway, I'm sure they'll elaborate on it in the sequel. But, uh, so he's there, he's holding Sarah Connor hostage. Uh, Schwarzenegger can't blow the place up because he doesn't want to kill Sarah Connor. But uh, they manage to get loose. Schwarzenegger has a fight with John Connor. Pretty cool fight. Like, John Connor flies backwards, hits something. Uh, like, he's facing frontward like that. And all at once, he comes through his back and then goes forward and hits Schwarzenegger like that. And it's cool because he's made a nanobot. You know, he can, like, uh, turn a nanobot form, like, fly around. He can, like, phase through Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger's, like, standing there and... You know, the evil Terminator, like, phases through him, like, five or six times or seven or eight times or something. Well, it's probably, like, four or five times. He phases through Arnold, like, a bunch of times. It's a cool effect. Um, pretty much, they, there's a time machine there, but it's not complete yet. 
and uh, the time like time field comes on, it's on or whatever. And Arnold, it's a big giant magnet, basically the time machine is. So Arnold takes the John Connor Terminator, throws him into it, or well, he grabs him and jumps into it with him, basically, or gets in it with him or whatever. He's holding him in there, keeping him from getting out. And John Connor Terminator gets disintegrated. Um, and then um, you think Arnold's dead, but his body gets thrown this liquid metal. This is another thing that's a little, eh, I don't know if this will work. His chip fuses with the liquid metal, and Arnold gets upgraded to basically a TX, I guess, because he's like metal over, over, I mean liquid over the metal, so he's basically like an Arnold TX, I'm pretty sure. Um, so he's alive, and now he's upgraded to Arnold X, I guess, <laughs> for the sequel. And so that's kind of, eh, but at the same time I'm thinking, well, maybe it'll be neat to see Arnold doing some liquid metal stuff, you know. But, uh, yeah, <clears throat> so we got that. But uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. But basically, after, basically after that, it's pretty much the end of the movie. Cal Reese goes and visits his younger self and explains everything to him, so uh, so he can tell his. Uh, so I mean, he tells his younger self what's all going to happen, so he'll have the memories in his head for when he gets older, so he can go through all this and know everything to do or whatever. Uh, but yeah, you got you got that, and then pretty much after that, it's the it's the end of the movie. Uh, Arnold keeps trying to smile in the movie. It's a really goofy smile. It's pretty funny. He can't perfect it. She's always like, yeah, he needs work. Uh, it's actually kind of funny how he does it. It actually is from a deleted scene in Terminator 2. It seems stupid in Terminator 2, but here it's pulled off effectively and, and better. The humor is better here than it was in Part 3 by far. Um, but yeah, all in all, after that, uh, you, the movie's over. They live happily ever after. Well, not really. I mean, after you, you watch the credits, there's a bonus scene after the credits where you find out Skynet's main system core is still alive. That way we can have that damn sequel. They could have just ended the franchise here, but got to have that damn sequel. But uh, yeah, I know some people have complained that they don't like the fact that what happens to John Connor and how he turns evil and dies. But I'm like, it's obvious. I mean, to me personally, it seems obvious that if they make a sixth movie and a seventh movie like they want to do, they make two more of these, that John Connor is going to come back in some way, shape, or form. Whether it be this John Connor who has somehow survived and been cured of the evil Terminator nanobots inside of him, or whether it'll be Sarah Connor's actual baby she's had. I mean, whether it be her actual, whether it be this Sarah Connor, you know, the new Sarah Connors. Uh, John Connor that she's had with this Kyle Reese, rather to be a little kid version of him, I mean, or the one from this movie. I don't know, but I do really feel that John Connor is going to be back in some way, shape, or form. Plus, Jason Clark is signed on for the sequel, I'm pretty sure. I've, I've heard that somewhere. I'm pretty sure he's signed on for the sequel, so John Connor will be back in some way, shape, or form, regardless of him being dead or not. Even if he even is dead, you know, they can always bring him back and just say the nanobots were somehow extracted from his body or some such shit. But yeah, all in all, for just this movie though by itself, it leaves a little bit out. You don't find out who sent the old Arnold back or whatever because they're saving that for the sequel. I hate shit like that because movies never know if they're going to get a sequel, so I don't really like stuff like that. But as far as this movie goes, just this one by itself, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun popcorn movie, which is all it's trying to be. It's just trying to be a popcorn movie. Yes, it redoes scenes from the original, but it does it with with heart. You can feel heart when it does it. It's not trying to insult those movies or spit on them or nothing. No, these actors are not as good as the ones from the original two Terminator movies. Um, and once again, I don't see the big deal about redoing scenes from the first two more dramatic and serious movies in a popcorn, you know, style Terminator movie. It does it in a fun, really heartfelt way. It's not trying to insult the movies that came before. It's not spit at them or nothing or trying to do them over and say we're better than that or whatever. Yes, it erases that timeline, but that's all. It does well. You don't really have to say it erases the timeline. It could just be like an alternate timeline. It's just a new timeline, and other movies are just off in another timeline. But really, that's the only way to continue this franchise. Salvation is pretty damn weak. <laughs> it's not a horrible movie. Salvation is like an all right movie, honestly. But at the same time, it's hard to really pull off an effective sequel to that without a sequel to that without completely changing everything and making it more like the James Cameron movies. And they just they really didn't have the balls to do that. Instead, they made a popcorn movie, which I'm thinking, well, I would prefer I would have much preferred a hardcore rated R Terminator movie, future movie. Um, so in a way, I, I probably would have liked a sequel to Salvation, but only if it was done like the James Cameron future scenes, only if it was exactly like that, not like a Mad Max movie like Salvation was. But there's no way they were going to do that. They just don't have the balls for it. So for what we got, a popcorn Terminator movie, I liked it. It was cool to see Arnold Mac. I'd give it three and a half stars out of four. It's a very enjoyable movie, but keep in mind, it's a popcorn movie. It's a movie that's just trying to have fun with the Terminator, you know, idea and stuff, with a little bit of heart there. 
no, it's nowhere near on the level of Terminator 1 and 2. Terminator 2 is one of the best movies ever made, so no, it's not on the level of one of the best movies ever made. And to be honest, none of these sequels will be. And I know that some people are really uh, excited about the rights going back to James Cameron. James Cameron, I mean in 2019 in order, James Cameron really doesn't give a shit about this franchise anymore. James Cameron's really sold out to the big corporate Hollywood and stuff like Titanic and Avatar and have a shit. Um... He's really sold out big time with that kind of shit. I don't ever see him doing a really, really hardcore Reddit R Terminator movie ever again. Uh, that just that would, that would be like a miracle, honestly. You'd have a better chance of winning a lottery than you would see in that. I'm just being honest here. <laughs> I really think if he gets the rights, he'll probably just develop a remake of the first one and not direct it. He'd probably just produce it or something. But yeah, that's about all I'd see him doing with it. But yeah, all in all, this is a three and a half star movie. Great popcorn movie. I mean, a really good popcorn movie. Not great, but really good popcorn movie. R recommended. I'll pick it up on Bully Ray when, I, when it comes out. Recommended movie. Uh, fun watch. Um, when I see a part six, yeah, but that's that's really pushing the franchise with a part six. But at the same time, if they can, if they give me answers to the questions that were left over from this film, and if the answers are really good, then maybe you know, eh, maybe they can do it. But after six, I really don't see how you can have any story left after a six movie. If you can pull a seven off, you know, bravo to you. But uh, six movies, whew, Lord have mercy. Plus, Arnold's getting pretty old. He handled the action here good, but he's getting pretty old. I'd say about a six movie would probably be about, probably about all he can handle, honestly, in terms of these movies. Um, a seventh one, I'm just not sure what you could do with that. I don't, and then even part six, I do not want to see another retread of. We have to stop Judgment Day. I do not want to see that again. You know, just trying to destroy Skynet itself or something again. You know, well, I guess that goes with the same thing, stopping Judgment Day. But just have Skynet itself become a, a Terminator. You know, it pretty much was the ultimate version of Skynet was. Um, so just have it show up and try to kill the heroes. Just have that be the movie. Well, not the whole movie. Have more of a story than that. But, you know, just don't have it be about stopping Judgment Day again. I'm sick of this stopping Judgment Day shit. But yeah, all in all, pretty good popcorn movie. I recommend it. Three and a half stars. Definitely a pretty good popcorn movie. I'll see you guys again with the next West Craven movie.